And I take my last breath of life I'll get to fly But what if you're wrong? What if the Bible's true? What if God's up there right now Watching over me and you? What will you say? What will you do when you stand before the Lord and your soul's required of you? There'll be no excuse, no more unbelief. And in his final words to you, he says, Depart from me. What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? We've all got those friends, the ones who were lost in sin. We pray the Lord will save their souls. We pray to heaven they will go. Nervous, we don't know what to say. And besides, if God really loves us, He'll make another way. But what if you're wrong? What if the Bible's true? What if God's up there right now?
Good evening. Good to see everyone this evening here at New Haven Baptist Church. Glad you could be with us. Welcome. I'm certain we'll have a good time this evening sharing and worshiping the Lord. A uh, few little announcements. Oneida City Limits starts right out here, so when you're running from here to there, it's not that far. Somebody this morning said they were so happy they could run all the way to Oneida. It's just right out here, folks, so don't let him get so excited that you think that's a long way. I think I owed him that one from this morning. Nah, some real announcements. Uh, tomorrow evening, 7 o'clock, disaster relief team meeting here at the church. Uh, don't forget, get your old t-shirts in. They're going to be cut up, made into jump ropes, and supplied in our Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. We're trying to get as many as we can. I think there's even going to be a special class on how to braid these t-shirts after they're cut up uh, to make jump ropes. So anybody that has Notre Dame t-shirts can bring those out and we'll take care of them. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> also, October, our Hearts with Hands group, canned fruit. This is for the, the Christian Center. We're trying to bring in canned fruit, all the canned fruit we can. Uh, that's our goal this, this month. Uh, so there is a uh, basket out in the foyer to fill up each and every service that we have together here at New Haven. Don't forget the Harvest Festival is Wednesday, October the 30th from 6 to 8 p.m. There's still a sign-up sheet out in the foyer to get your name on it to help out. Uh, it's a great ministry to be part of and to see the smiles on these children's faces when they come through and, and play games is, is just wonderful. Uh, and don't forget next Sunday, the 13th, we're gonna take up a special offering because there's a need that we need to address in the community. Uh, so we're gonna take a special offering next Sunday morning uh, following the morning service. Uh, that's the announcements for this week. I'll ask our ushers to come this evening to take this evening's offering. Hey, Pastor, remember uh, Kevin and Clara visited with them for a few minutes this afternoon, but still remember them. Prior. Let's continue to remember Brother Kelly and Sister Clara. Pray with me this evening. Father, we're thankful for the many blessings of the day, the beautiful sunshine, the nice light breeze. Father, we truly know that your hands are at work and, and you surround us with your love. Father, I pray this evening that you'll continue to lead, guide, and direct us in all that we do. And I pray that you'll have a hand on this service, that everything that we do and we say and we sing will be uplifting and glorifying to thee. Father, let us put you first in everything that we do uh, here on this earth and, and show others what Christ really means to us. Father, I continue to pray that you'll be with our pastor, can strengthen him, guide him, direct him as he leads us here at New Haven that we take on new challenges uh, to show others what being a Christian and having eternal life is really about. Now, Father, we take time this evening to uh, give back to thee from the many blessings that you've given to us. I ask tonight that you bless the gift and the giver as it goes forth to do thy work here on this earth. For it's in Christ's name we pray, and amen. amen. <clears throat>
welcome each other worship together this evening
sing, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, folks. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood. Just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust Him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that He is with me, will be with me. How I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace. Let's sing that last chorus again, folks. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen and amen. Aren't you glad you can trust Him? Amen. I've proven Him over and over and over again. And I found him to be faithful, amen, amen. and trustworthy, uh, and he'll always be that way. Praise the Lord for that. I'm thankful um, for that tonight. We're going to take a little break from Daniel tonight. We finished up with David uh, on Wednesday night, and tonight we're going to look in the book of Proverbs and just to, um, uh, to go over a few things, just, um, just life, amen. You ever heard that? You ever just been doing life, amen? That's what we're all doing, right? Just life. Uh, life in general. Uh, how many of you think life's funny? How many of you think life's cruel? <laughs> amen. Uh, life can do some things, right? Throw some, throw some curveballs. You're just going along and all of a sudden life happens. And I don't know any other way to say that. Not, but I'm thankful tonight that the Word of God deals with life. And um, there are some, uh, some things about life, just life. And I think Proverbs chapter 9, 18 verses there in that chapter basically gives us life in a nutshell. And that's kind of what I'd like to talk about a little bit tonight if I can. Uh, in Proverbs 9 verse 1, uh, the Bible says, Wisdom hath built her house, she has hewn out her seven pillars, She's killed her beast, she's mingled her wine, she hath also furnished her table. 
she hath sent forth her maidens. She cries upon the highest places of the city. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. As for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Come to eat of my bread and drink of the wine which I have mingled. Forsake the foolish and live. And go in the way of understanding. He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. And he that rebuketh a wicked man getteth himself a blot. Reprove not a scorner. Lest he hate thee, rebuke a wise man and he'll love thee. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he'll increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. For by me thy days shall be multiplied, and the years of thy life shall be increased. If thou be wise, thou shalt be wise for thyself. But if thou scornest, thou alone shalt bear it. A foolish woman is clamorous, she's simple, and knoweth nothing. For she sitteth at the door of her house on a seat in the high place of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. And whoso is simple, let him turn in hither, and as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depths of hell. Charlie Brown's sister Sally approached her brother. Anybody like Charlie Brown? Remember watching that? Yes, reading the peanuts. Yes. Uh, uh, Sally approached her brother and declared, I think I've discovered the secret of, to life. You just hang around until you get used to it. Amen. <laughs> I can kind of, I can kind of understand that a little bit. Uh, also read about a, a fellow who wrote uh, Dear Abby one time, and uh, had a question, and it appeared in the regular column of Parade, the old Parade magazine, and and this particular inquirer said of his his life was more exhausting than he ever imagined. And he wanted to know, is this normal? And Marilyn told him that his life was indeed normal and then gave the following analogy about life. And here's what she said. Much of the time, life is like going through the airport, steering a loaded luggage cart with one bad wheel. Sometimes you just feel ridiculous. Sometimes you actually look ridiculous. And sometimes all you can do is just try to push it generally in the right direction <laughs> uh, amen that sounds a lot like life there are truth and some truth to both statements but surely there has to be more to life than just hanging around and trying to get used to it and there has to be more to life than just trying to push it in the right direction and I'm thankful as a believer that there is God has something to say about life. How many are glad of that? Amen. I'm thankful uh, that God has something to say in that he has given us his word, the Bible, about life and how it ought to be lived. And we do have time uh, to look at this here tonight, I believe. And Proverb 9 breaks life down, I think, to its very simplest truth and gives us this this life, just life in a nutshell, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about and maybe amplify just a little bit um, this evening and just look at some, uh, some facts of life, if you will, as they're revealed in this chapter. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down because I think this will help you uh, and help me when we're talking to folk and we're dealing in life, in our own life. I think there are two calls in life. Verses 1 through 4 and 13 through 16 lets us know that there are two calls in life. Uh, one, in verses 1 through 4, is the call of wisdom. The call of wisdom. I want you to, to note the context that wisdom has a fine house that's held up by seven pillars. And that talks about and speaks of uh, spaciousness and stability. Uh, her house is away from the path of normal human activity. Verse 3, she has to send her servant to call people to come. She seeks them 
where they live. She invites them to come to her place for a better life. <laughs> wow. Wisdom. What is wisdom? Uh, someone said that wisdom was intelligence. That's not what wisdom is. Wisdom is not intelligence. Wisdom is not a high IQ. Wisdom uh, is the best use of knowledge. That's what Lewis Timberlake said about wisdom. It is the best use of knowledge. I like that definition. Biblical wisdom is, is knowing, having that knowledge and understanding and living out the word of God. A life of wisdom then is a life that lives out the truths of God's word. When we talk about truth, there is truly only one truth, and that is the truth that's found and derived in God's word. Amen. And so knowledge or wisdom is having a knowledge of God's word. The only way sometimes we'll get through life is by picking up the manual. Amen. Uh, life's manual. The answer's here. If it's not here, then there's probably not an answer for it. But I'll guarantee you as a believer, as Christians, um, we ought to have the knowledge or the wisdom or the understanding of God's word. And by the way, there's only one way that you can, you can live out God's word. What is that? To know it. I'm challenging you, church, to know God's word. Uh, the beginning of wisdom is getting in the word of God. The getting of wisdom is to have knowledge that comes from the word of God. This life is hard, man. Uh, living this life is hard. You wake up tomorrow morning and something hits you right in the face you didn't see coming, right? You know what that's, that's called? Life. <laughs> tomorrow night, something will hit you before bedtime maybe. Sometime you're doing life and, and there's only one way you're going to get through it. And that's in the word of God and through the word of God. And that's that knowledge. That's wisdom. There are two calls in life. There is the call of wisdom. A life of wisdom is a life that lives out the truth of the word of God. What did Jesus say? And then huh, there's the call of wickedness. That's verses 13, 14, 15, and 16. To put that in context, I said there are two calls in life. The call of wisdom, the call of wickedness. You know, the, the word tells us that folly also has a house. But it's built where the fools are already living. Verse 15. They're already there. This makes it far more convenient. This implies that men can enter the house of folly with little or no change in their lives. To get wisdom, you have to put forth the effort. To get folly, you can continue like you are where you are. You know what folly is presented as here? It's presented as a prostitute. That's what it's presented as. Now, I, I know that's kind of uh, a little bit uh, uncouth uh, at church to talk about, but I'm just telling you what the Word of God presents it for. This foolishness here, this, this, uh, this wickedness here, it's she, it's presented, she promises the fool a good time. That is the enticement of evil. We're going along doing life. Listen to me, life knocks us down. What do we do? We have two choices to make, right? I dealt with a couple of young kids this week. Don't attend church here. Neither one of them. But I, they come to see me, come to talk to me, and, and they're talking about life. And this is one thing that really got to weigh in on me to get here. And Wednesday night, I was heartbroken as I stood behind the pulpit and preached. It was hard for me to even finish up uh, in, in the life of David because just to see the destructiveness of sin. Amen. How many of you ever see it and just get sick of it? Amen. As a believer, to see the carnage that's left behind by a life of wickedness. And so, as you know, the preacher, I was going on life, and I was going to church, and everything was going great, and I loved it, and everything, I was loving Jesus, and in my, in my youth choir, and we were doing great things, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the enemy did this, and it knocked me off kilter, and I got out in the world, and I've made a real mess of it. See, that's what the world does as believers, right? It entices us. Wisdom is the word of God. Being in the book, knowing what it says, being, being steadfast, unshakable, unmovable. That's how you get that is with this knowledge of God's word. But so many times, uh, kids mess up. Why? Because of life. 
Life is not fair. We've been taught a lie when, when, when it was like, well, it just ain't fair. Well, life ain't fair, <laughs> especially as a believer. God never said it would be fair, did he? Can you show it to me in the book? It's not in here. Life's not fair. So we have to understand God's word, and we have to be ready when it comes. There, there is that call of wickedness, and when we get knocked off our feet, then we are enticed by evil. And this is why there are far more people who live a life of sin than there are who live a life of righteousness. People like water and electricity almost choose the path of least resistance. They do what comes naturally and they gravitate toward evil. How many of you today got up and said, I am going to try my best to do bad today? Nobody. Why? Why didn't you get up and do that? I'm going to tell you why. Because it just comes natural. <laughs> How many in here has to work real, man, preacher, I'm going to be honest. I, I'd love for somebody to come to say, preacher, whew, man, I had to work hard to sin this week. <laughs> whew. I finally squeaked one out, amen. <laughs> I've never heard that. Any of y'all ever done, you, you ever, you ever done that before? Some of y'all come up to this week and say, man, I've been working hard. It's only Tuesday, but boy, I've been trying to sin. <laughs> Yes. You know why? Because it comes so natural. We don't have to try to sin, but we have to try to be righteous. Amen. Preacher, I'm trying so hard to serve God. How many times you ever said that? How many times you ever done that? You know why? Because of life. Because life ain't fair. If life was fair, it'd be easy to serve God and hard to sin, right? As a believer. But it ain't like that. We have that imputed sin nature in us, like we talked about this morning. Listen to me. Here's what I want you to know about life. There's two calls. There's a call of wisdom and there's a call of wickedness. We naturally gravitate toward the wicked. That's why we got to be in God's word. Not only are there two calls in life, there's a two choices in life. Verse, uh, verse 4 talks about that. Verses 10 through 12, verse 16 of what we just read talks about the choices. When the calls of life are issued, the ultimate choice lies with an individual. Even Jesus presented life as consistent of only two choices in Matthew chapter 7. Christ understood this. There are two choices, and the ultimate choice is with you. We do not talk about this in the church anymore. And that's why we have a generation that will not take responsibility. That's good preaching right there. We have a generation, it's somebody else's fault. Listen to me. It's the teacher's fault that my grades are bad. It's the coach's fault that I can't play football. It's the preacher's fault. Hmm, that's even a better one there. <laughs> Blame him. Listen to me. There are two choices in life, and it's the ultimate choice lies with the individual. And listen, one of them, verse 16, is grounded in human understanding. That's the pathway of the foolish. It's the choice that requires no choice. It's merely man doing that which he does by nature. This is man going his own way. Proverbs 16, 25 talks about that. Man going, listen, the, the, the choice that's grounded in human understanding is an easy choice. It's what you naturally gravitate to, your own understanding. That's why the Bible says to lean not to your what own understanding well if you do that then you're going to be grounded in human understanding <laughs> wisdom listen the greatest wisdom of man is still foolishness to god do you know that you can go to you can go to whoever you want to for wisdom listen god will confound human understanding there's two choices one grounded in human understanding one grounded in heavenly understanding those are the only two what a contrast. If you choose the path of wisdom, you do so because you've come to understand some important truth. You have come to understand the person, position, and the power of God. The wise person has come to understand that one day God will judge the lives that we're living. And so, therefore, we are to be, he is to be honored and feared as we pass through this world. Listen. 
In the end, our eternal destiny will rest on the choices we make concerning Jesus Christ right now. The quality of our life as believers. Listen to me. We're saved. Say amen. We get to go to heaven. Hallelujah. (laughs) But the quality of this life that you live here will be based on whether you lean in human understanding. If you try to understand why do bad things happen to good people, why do bad things happen to God's people, and in your mind you think it's just not fair. The wicked are prospering. God, I serve you. I live for you. I do everything that you ask me to do to the best of my ability, and I fall short miserably. I fail miserably. And listen, And then you get to pooch mouth and you go to running from God. Or you can say, God, you never promised me a bed of roses. You've saved me. I'm on my way to heaven. If you never do anything else for me, God, though he slay me, yet will I serve him. That's the beginning of wisdom and heavenly understanding. God, I'll walk with you. I'll talk with you. I want to be with you. Heavenly understanding. Listen, there's two choices. You can get the pooch mouth and get mad at God and go on. I'm just going to walk away. That's what happens a lot of times, isn't it? I know great men of God that just quit because they didn't understand. I know preachers. I've got preacher friends right now. And by the way, there's such a shortage of preachers. Hard to believe, isn't it? They're quitting in droves. Why? Because what I'm telling you, that we try to make sense of it, try to understand what's going on. And there's no way to do it. All we have to do is lean on God, amen, and his understanding. There's a heavenly understanding. There are two calls in life. There are two choices in life. And there are two contrasts in life. There's a wicked man and there's a wise man. Some of those verses uh, tell us that the wicked men, verses 7 and 8, or the fool is unteachable. He will not listen to reason. He will not listen to the Lord. He tries to show, that God tries to show him his waywardness. It only creates an enemy. But wise, listen, wise men change their minds. Fools never. A wise man thinks all he says. A fool says all he thinks. That's an anonymous quote. Too often we change jobs and friends and spouses Instead of changing ourselves. Boy, that'll preach. (laughs) Did you hear what I just said? We change everything around us when the problem is in our heart. We don't change it. That's foolish. That's, listen, that's what the Bible talks about, a wicked man. (laughs) The person who chooses human foolishness over divine truth is a person determined to to live his life on his own terms don't you tell God and don't you tell me I'm going to live the way I want to and expect the blessings of God you won't do it amen so there is there's the wicked man and then there's the wise man see the contact the context and the contrast while the foolish persists in his foolishness the wise man will listen when he's confronted with the truth. He'll adjust his life accordingly. He has a teachable spirit. He realizes his own limitations. He realizes his own shortcomings. He grasps every opportunity to develop his life into something that's pleasing to the Lord. Wise men learn more from fools than fools learn from wise men. Did you get that? Here's the, listen to me. When I was 26-year-old, 27-year-old in the ministry, I, listen, I remember thinking I was the smartest man in the world. I'm 51 today, and I'm telling you, sometimes I feel like the foolish guy in the building. Amen? Uh, that, listen, that's not too smart on my part then, but it's a lot smarter now. With age, sometimes comes wisdom. You can say amen to that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I tell folk, I, I'm glad I wasn't smart when I was young. <laughs> I'd be a millionaire not preaching probably. <laughs> not that I'm that smart now. Nobody better not say amen. <laughs> I know Patrick's biting his tongue because he's been after me all day. <laughs> amen. Listen to me. Uh, these two kinds of people are all around us. They're those who are unteachable. They think they know what's best for their lives, and you cannot tell them any different. You know, the Bible says people like that. Now, I'm not saying, here's what the Bible says about people who are unteachable. They're fools. That's what the Word says. Listen, we need to be pliable, and we need to be teachable. I told Harley, 
He won't play football this year. Never played it in his life. And I said to him, Harley, not, not, not organized. I said, here's all I want you to do. This is our goal between you and me this year is I want you to be teachable. I want you to be coachable. Boy, I, I, listen, as Christians, as, as your pastor, that's all I'm asking from you tonight is just be coachable. Let the Holy Spirit coach you. Let the Holy, because here's what I want to be as your pastor. I want to be coachable, amen? I, I want to be teachable. I want to learn. If I make a mistake, I want to learn. Trust me, I don't, I don't believe anybody have a problem telling me I've made a mistake, amen? <laughs> uh, but I want to learn from those, and I think that we ought to want to do that too because that's the difference in being wicked and being wise. The Bible says those that are unteachable, they're fools, and they're those people who, who know uh, they aren't perfect. They know they need instruction. That's the kind of people I think God's looking for, and they receive the truth of God with joy. Those folks are wise. We have to make up our mind what best describes us. Finally, I'm going to give you this, and I'm going to go. There are two consequences in life. That's what it talks about. After this contrast, after the choices and the calls, then there are consequences. There's two consequences. You can attend the feast. Look what it says here in verse 5 and 6. Wisdom spreads her table for those who enter her house. She strengthens them. She satisfies them. She sustains them. She gives them all they need for now and all they need for the future. Listen, the same is true for the person who chooses the way of God over the way of the world. He spreads his feast for us as we pass through life. He promises, uh, promises us that we have a home with him in heaven forever. Choosing to live by the wisdom of God will get you and make you fit for glory isn't that good? Amen. It's tough right now. I know. It's life. What are you doing, preacher? I'm doing life. I, what are you doing? You're just doing life, man. We brace for the next hit. We trust God with tomorrow. Say amen. We brace for the next hit tomorrow. We trust God for Tuesday. We brace on two. We trust God for Wednesday. And if God brings us back here, we ought to shout the victory. If he doesn't, we'll shout over there. Amen. That's, listen. We, we, we need to, you say, well, the Bible talks about abundant life. Listen, that's what I'm talking about too. You can just do life and be miserable or you can do life, abundant life, and be joyful. And you choose that. You are the one that chooses how you act and react. Your attitude will dictate your actions. I'll guarantee it. Look here. There's two consequences. You can attend the feast. Live by the wisdom of God, or you can attend the funeral. That's what we just read, verse 17 and 18. What a contrast. The wise man goes off to enjoy the feast. The fool goes to endure his funeral. Wow. What are you saying, preacher? Stay with me. I'm going to close with this. You can be joyful, or you can be buried. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Isn't that pretty good preaching there? <laughs> well, hallelujah. I like that. You, listen, you can serve God with gladness. You can, you, can, you can try to do all that God's called you to do, be all that God's, no matter what comes your way, or you can just attend your funeral. Because let me tell you what's going to happen. Circumstances. Reasons why you can have the pooch mouth. <laughs> you can walk around mad all the time. You can walk around complaining. You ever, you ever been around people like that? Can, can I just tell you something? If you're going to complain all the time, I, I'm going to do my best to try to get away from you. Say amen right there. Well, preacher, you can't do that. You have to listen. No, I don't. I have to do this. <laughs> right? I'm giving away these big secrets. <laughs> so sometimes if you're just doing this and I'm doing this, I'm not listening. I'm just doing this. <laughs> uh, well, I better hurry up and go. I'm getting myself in trouble now. <laughs> Uh, listen to me. If you're always a Debbie Downer, whiny, crybaby, there ain't nobody that loves God and understands the Word of God and wants to hang around you. Amen. They want to be around people that lifts them up because we've got enough of the world tearing us down. So you choose. It's your choice. Life's going to come. And by the way, it's just life. <laughs> it's not eternal life. Now, somebody say amen right there because that's the aim, Right? That's the goal. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. You've been good to us. Oh, how good you've been to us. God, I pray that we would live life 
And understand it's just this life. One day we get to go home. But while we're living this life, God let us do it with joy in our heart, with a pep in our step. Let the world see something different in us. When these consequences arise and things come, may we be sold out for the cause of Christ. May we lead others to Jesus in the midst of our storms. What a testimony for you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You're at liberty to go.